turn on the radio in just a few minutes. It's still 91.7. Um, welcome a couple of announcements. Um, it looks like um, as far as uh, our restrictions and our, our opportunities that we're going to have church like this probably for the rest of June. So um, I would send out notices. Uh, please tell your friends and we can, we can handle another 10 or 15 cars in this. But I want to tell you something really exciting for us. Next Sunday, uh, Pastor James Houston and the Greater Joy folks will join us in worship. So we're going to be together um, up right here under this tent, and the Lord willing and the weather permitting, and have, have a worship together with, with our brothers across the street. And um, just uh, I'm excited about that, and I'm hope, hoping you'll tell your friends and we, we can sign up. It's going to be the same thing, sign up online. And get here today in case you haven't figured out we are going to celebrate the eucharist holy communion together and i'll walk you through that later it'll be after the sermon 
Um, there's a liturgy in there's a prayer. I'll go through some liturgy up here, and there's a prayer that we'll all do together that's in your packet when you got. And hopefully you have enough for everybody in your car. If you did not receive uh, as you came in, just please let us know. Turn on your flashers, and one of the ushers or Christy will come around and, and make sure you have that. Um, so let's pray together, and then we'll sing another song or two, and then we'll get right into the Word. Thank you, Lord, for uh, this place. Your sun is, comes up every morning. Even if we can't see it and there's too many clouds, your sun is always uh, there. And we're so grateful that your promises and your mercies are new every morning too. No matter how dark things get through the night, every day you are with us and you wake us up. Um, we have challenges ahead, but you're a big God. So we pray that what you do with us and through us today might equip us for what we face tomorrow. And we give you the rest of this hour, and uh, we ask you to show up, show off, and send us in Christ's name. Amen.
Um, I'll give you instructions in a few minutes about the communion. Just uh, It's a little tricky. You peel the plastic off the top first, and then you peel the bottom off and try not to spill it all over the car. But we'll get to that in a minute. So let's, let's go to, to the Lord in prayer with each other. Um, I'm going to pray for our nation. And it's, it's in a mess. Um, but we are those who believe, as Scripture says, that um, we, we have the answer. So we, we are uh, called not to keep it to ourselves. There's been marches and protests and, you know, everything's going on. Most, most of what I've seen around in our communities has been really good. There's, uh, Christ's name has been invoked and people are kneeling in, in prayer and joining hands. Um, the news, it doesn't sell news, it doesn't make the news, but it's happening. And uh, we're, we're endeavoring to be a part of the solution and not the problem. So we're going to pray for our nation this morning. And if, uh, I, if you have to have your, wind, your car on and your windows up for the air conditioning, I understand it. But if it's down, then you can just reach your hands out the windows and we'll uh, grab, hold hands across the parking lot this morning. If you are in need of prayer, then just turn your lights on for a second so I can see who that is. And uh, as scripture tells us, we're going to get into in a minute, that in the fellowship of believers, when this new church was formed, they, they were, uh, their eyes were so open to one another and each other's needs that they immediately recognized the need in their brother or the need in their sister. And they took care of that need. They met that need. Some were short and some had plenty. Some were tired and some were full of energy. And they, they found a way uh, without calling the office and putting your name on a list to meet the needs of each other. So in our time, I'm asking you to do that too. If you are in a place where you are unable to give time, money, resources, health, driving, then let me get you on the giving side of things. And if you're in a place right now where circumstances are, are hard and you could use some help from us, then please let us know that too. Um, I want to be very proactive and, and um, intentional about the church coming together and, and meeting each other's needs. You should know that while you're going on with your lives Sunday through Sunday, that the Church of Jesus Christ in your name is still very active. We are keeping people from being evicted. We're keeping lights on folks who don't didn't get paid. We're providing food. We're getting gas in their car so they can get to work if they need to or get to the doctors if they need to. The, the meeting the needs through your hands and your generosity has continued without without really a pause since all this started. And we continue to do that. And I praise God for the way you have been faithfully giving even when you couldn't come here. And uh, that's a testimony to the goodness of God in your life. So even though you might not hear those testimonies for a while, know that, that you, through Christ, are, are helping others. And um, I hope they can only increase as the days go on. So let's pray together. If you uh, came this morning and you need healing, then just turn on your lights as we're going to pray for healing. Let's join our hearts together. Father, you are a God who heals. You accompanied the, the apostles with signs and wonders. That healings and, and miracles were a part of church from the very beginning. And we pray today, even this morning, that those that came with that need, that you might meet that need even now, that your spirit would move through us, through the hearts and souls of your saints, of your children. You've given us power and authority through your Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, we pray you would heal those in our midst and those that uh, have come in need this morning. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for uh, finances. We pray for those that are struggling right now because of being laid off or reduced hours or all of the things that uh, our economy is going through right now. Lord, I pray that you would meet their every need. You, you wake up every morning with fresh bread, that you would meet their needs daily, that you would provide their food and drink and shelter and housing, safety, 
just like a good king does. He takes care of his servants. Lord, we pray through your son's name, Jesus, that you would continue that in a mighty way. And Lord, um, where we fail to trust you, help us to see your hand in all of this. I pray that you would multiply those who are giving generously, that they may continue to do so just like you rewarded your, your servants. That you might find us good stewards of all that we have. And for, I pray for uh, doubt and, and wavering faith. Lord, in these times that so many things come against us and that the church is ridiculed or shut down, that the, the preachers are, are silenced. Lord, let us not waver in our faith. That there is nothing that takes place without your knowing. And that you're allowing the things to transpire right now, that you are up to something we can't see. So strengthen our faith. Stir us up that we might lean and press into you and you alone. That we would seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And trust you to take care of all these things. And uh, and lastly, Lord, we pray for this nation. That you would use your church and the gospel of the kingdom of God to break down barriers and walls and unite people as one. You said in Christ that the two have become one. Those that are far off have been brought near. Husbands have been reconciled to their wives. Fathers to their children. Mothers to their daughters neighbor to neighbor. Lord, we pray now for a miracle where it is going to truly take a miracle for that to happen. We place ourselves within reach that you can use us to make that happen. We pray, we uh, ask you to bless our land, our leaders, our church, our homes, our families, and our schools. As we lift up the children that have that one experience that they'll never forget. this time to shore them up, to reignite families and ties, and make up all that was lost over the summer next year when we get back. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Let's sing one more song and we'll get right to it. We're going to continue in the presence of the Lord before the throne of God.
Okay, so we're going to try your radio, 91.7, if it works. Then we'll, um, you can roll your windows up and turn on the AC. Okay. So if it's working on your radio, or you just don't need your radio, if, uh, if you can't hear me, Flash your light so that I can make sure. Are you listening? This is tough. You can't. That's a bad question. You're good? All right, stop yelling. All right. Get your Bibles out. Let's look at Acts 2 together. We're going to do this. We're going to go crazy on the inside. We can't go crazy on the outside because I'm going to knock things over and you're going to have to get out of the car and we can't have that. Acts, we're going to in Acts chapter 4. Right along as the church is developing. We've been in Acts in our Bible studies too. So some of this you, you might have heard already a little bit if you joined us in our Bible studies. I'd like to encourage you to do that. Um, not too many have been doing it. 
They are Wednesdays at 2 and 6.30, and you should be getting the Zoom link for that. So I'm going to pick up in Acts chapter 4, but we got to look at Acts chapter 2, because that's where we left off last week. And uh, the Holy Spirit fell, and Peter preached a, a powerful sermon. 3,000 souls were added to the church. People were amazed at the signs and wonders, and the, they were amazed at this gospel. They were amazed that the truth of the gospel actually applied to them. Because they were from all over the place. And they had been waiting for the Messiah to come. From the beginning of the church, well actually from the beginning of, of the Bible, but since we're talking about our church, since from the beginning of, of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the church, people were just flat amazed at the and what was going on it says that they were in awe they were amazed they uh, pondered and they wondered they were confused they just couldn't get over the way these people were acting and what God was doing they it, they just couldn't get over it they either were rejected by it couldn't believe it and walked away or were drawn into it and and became a part of it there there was there's no stories of people coming to church and saying, oh, that was okay. There's no stories of people hearing the gospel, seeing the church in action, and then, yeah, I might, I might do that again. I don't know. We'll see. If I, maybe if I have to mow the lawn, I won't come. There was none of that. The people of God behaved in such a way or allowed God to behave in such a way through them that it was continuously amazing Everyone who witnessed it. I believe we're going to change the world. We've got to be amazing people. We've got to live amazing lives. We've got to allow God to do amazing things through us and with us. This is not the time to be ordinary. This is not the time to be regular or halfway or moderate middle of the road I don't want to offend anybody I don't want to do anything I don't want to say anything my church I got my God and I'm going to mind my own business because I don't want to get in the way I don't want to stir anybody up I don't want to cause waves really what we're saying is I don't want anybody to be amazed by me or I don't want anybody to be amazed at, at what God is doing with me or through me. Sometimes the amazing thing is just confessing how little I know about things. Or what little competency I have in something. Instead of trying to pretend I'm so great. Because then when God does something through me, the reality is, wow, that's amazing. I never knew you could do that. I go around pretending I've got it all together. Nobody ever sees an amazing God work through me. I never let them see the downside, so when the upside comes, there's nobody amazed. I pretend everything's good all the time. Just talking about me, not you. If I start talking about you, you're not allowed to leave yet. Nobody's allowed to pull out until the whole thing's over. So, I don't know. Honk your horn if this week someone said to you, wow, you're amazing. That was amazing. Okay. <laughs> Good. There's a couple. We need... So we talked last week, like, what, is, what does that mean to have the Holy Spirit fill you up? What does it mean to live according to that Spirit, to be, to be filled with new wine and, and walk in that, in that power? What does life look like? And, and one of the things that it looks like is that we're not afraid. The world, um, we, we see on the news this, this fearlessness of this young generation. And, and the boldness to do things that are wrong and sin. And 
breaking things and the, the rage and the boldness that's in them because, well, for a multitude of reasons. Some for just because they go sinful, they want to sin. They're after themselves. Some because they're mad of, of perpetual injustice. Some because they're, they're mad at something that personally happened to them and, they, and they've never been able to complain about it or, or tell anybody about it. And they're letting it out. And all of this is inside coming out. But what we do see is this boldness, this willingness to just not hide anymore. But so much of it is, is for the wrong reason. It's, it's for self. The difference in the early church was they they had a boldness and a, and a willingness to be out there and to put self last. Because every time Peter and John and the apostles left that upper room, they were putting their lives and their livelihood at stake. But what was more important was promoting this amazing God that had died for them. So, uh, let's go to chapter 4. So this is when Peter and John left the house. They, they healed the, the lame man that was lame since birth for over 40 years. People were utterly amazed and caught off guard by the miracle, especially the man who was healed. We touched on it last week a little bit. Peter and John went to him. Peter speaks. In most of, of Acts, and most were Luke in Luke's writing, I think because Luke was close to Peter and, and got some first-hand information, but for most of that, it's always Peter who speaks first. John is always there, right there where all the action is every time, but it's usually Peter that opens his mouth first. Peter looks down at him and says, I need you to look at me. I need you to look at me. And the man, the lame man who was begging and asking for food, not asking to be healed, just asking for food, looked Peter in the eye. We talked about it on Wednesday, but I think it's important to talk about that for just a second. There's something very significant about looking somebody in the eye, about seeing face to face. Because what happens is, all of a sudden, you're more aware of, of you, yourself, and your own inadequacies, or at least how others see you when you look face to face. You know that most of what's going on out there right now is easy because you can put on a mask, you do it at dark, nobody can see you, you're anonymous, you can be part of a crowd, you just blend in, and you can get away with it. But to stop and sit down and sit face to face and look eye to eye, that's when transformation happens. That's when motives can be adjusted. When intentions become revealed and hearts are open to the needs of others. I think one of the first things we have to be is people who look at each other. That's kind of ironic because we were separated. And I don't know, I'm not going to prophesy whether this virus is the work of the devil or just a sin in this world or whatever it is. For some reason or another, God has allowed it to happen and he will capitalize on it and use it to bring good as part of his plan. But it's ironic that in this time, what has been accomplished is that he separated the saints from each other so we can't sit across the table, we can't look eye to eye, we can't enter his presence with singing as one, we can't hold hands or give holy hugs, we can't get close enough to one another to really see the needs of this world. Somehow we have to find a way around that. We have to find a way get our hearts and our lives to be connected. So he connects to this lame man and the lame man looks at him and they stare at him in my eye and Peter, one of the things Peter wanted him to see was, look at me, I don't have any gold. I don't have any silver. You can look at us. We're, we, we don't have any wealth. 
with just a, a couple of regular guys. Which is the first shattering of your my excuse. You know, when if I hit the lottery, I'm gonna really do some good. Or if I when I get that stimulus check, then I'm really gonna be generous. I'm really gonna help some people. Or when I get my raise, or when I just get this last bill paid, or when I get caught up in my debt, then I'm really gonna start working for God. And that's just not the way it works. Peter and John stepped out. They had nothing. They had no silver and gold. They didn't have any food with them. But they were so consumed with what they did have, they weren't worried about what they didn't have. And what they did have, the power of Jesus Christ living in them. They had been given the power through the Holy Spirit of the name and authority of Jesus Christ. And Peter said, this is what I do have. Let's see if that can do any good in your life. And it healed him. It restored him. It didn't feed him, it restored him. And it didn't actually just restoring to the way he once was before his leg was broke. He was never able to walk. So it restored this man to a version of himself that had never even existed before. A version of this man that only God could see in him that was plagued by sin from birth and inadequacies and ailments and lame. There was a man in that body that God had created that had never even been revealed yet. That was revealed through the power and authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have people in our lives, and maybe it's you today, that still has not realized the you that God That God has created to be. We're still suffering with the inadequacies, thinking things are okay. And there is a you that God can see that He pictured when He formed you in His mother's womb that has not come to pass yet. Not in its full glory, not with all its potential, not leaping and dancing and praising. Would you look or just eye to eye for a moment? Talk enough to forget about what you don't have. And ask him to give you. God is ready to do abundantly more than we could ever ask of him. And there is a you that only God can see. And it's just waiting to blossom, waiting to flourish, waiting to come out if we would surrender everything to Him. So the man gets healed and he jumps and he leaps and he praises God and he walks with them right into church. He just gets up and goes in where he's never been allowed to go. He's always had to sit on the sidewalk outside, in the porch outside, and watch people come and go. But now, the first thing he does with this new ability is to walk into the congregation and worship God and praise God. I guess he forgot he was hungry or he didn't have any money. And he caused a commotion. And everybody wanted to know what happened. And he gathered around Peter. And the first thing Peter says is, this wasn't me. This wasn't John. We don't have in us the power or the authority or the means or the righteousness to pull something like this off. Let me tell you how this happened. This has happened by the power and authority of the name of Jesus Christ whom you crucified. That's how it happened. Who God has raised from the dead. And then he preaches, and he preaches, and he preaches for hours and hours. Crowds gather, and everybody gathers, and he preaches all day until it's almost dark. And finally, the church folk come out of the halls, the sacred halls of the churches, and to see what the heck is going on, and who are you causing this commotion? 
And they're really more upset that they're preaching Jesus is raised from the dead than anything else. But they knew about all this, and they heard the rumors, and everybody in town is talking about it. And here, there's these guys right in the middle of the temple. And these are Sadducees and scribes. They, they don't even believe in the resurrection. They don't believe in the resurrection of the Lord. So they're flat out teaching a, a false doctrine right there in the middle of the church. So they arrest them and throw them in prison. Chapter 4 starts off with that story. Still with me? We're going to get to this. As they spoke to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they had taught the people and preached in Jesus' name the resurrection of the dead. And they laid hands on them, and they, not like in a holy way, but they arrested them. They grabbed them and put them in custody until the next day because it was already getting dark. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Through one broken man and one message, God added thousands of souls. The one broken man who put himself in a position, humbled himself in a position to be exposed as broken, not hiding any of his problems or faults or failures, willing to be the object of public ridicule or praise. That just one miracle caused such amazement that they gathered to hear the word. The word had such power that it transformed their lives and got out of thousands to the church. Maybe it's time one of us puts ourselves in a position in our brokenness to allow God to use us to amaze the crowd. So the next day, the king found that the rulers and elders they brought Peter and John out from them, and all of the big shots were there. The high priest and the high priest's family and some of the church rulers, Peter, the Pharisees, and Pharisees, everybody's name you would recognize came out that morning, and they had to get to the bottom of this. They couldn't come out against the miracle. Thousands of and this is the guy that sat there every day as they walked in and out to go to work. They worked in the temple, and that lame guy was there almost every day, and he walked past them every day. And all they had to give was corn. All they had of the resource to offer the lame was money or bread. But this new church, this new wine, doesn't offer money, it offers power, it offers healing, it offers restoration, it offers wholeness, which pretty much would put an end to the way they did church. So they warned them, they chastised them, they scolded them, and they told them not to do it again. And they sent him home wounded, but not defeated. And that jumps us to verse 23, and this is what we're going to close with. So then being let go, Peter and John, being let go, went to their own companions, to their own friends, went back home where everybody was gathered, all and told them all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard this, so when the crowd and the company of believers heard this, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God. You made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, and by your mouth your servant David has prophesied. Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. 
and John and Peter recognized that what was taking place was the fulfillment of David's prophecy, where the rulers had come against their Christ. Not just the church leaders, but the civil leaders. The leadership of the government, the leadership of the church, had all come against this gospel, this anointed one. And he said, this is, this is what's happening now. Both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel. This is the, the, everybody in, in the land planned, plotted to come together and put the Christ to death. But he says, to do whatever your hand, O Lord, and your purpose determine beforehand to be done. So could it be that in this time right now, when our government wants to close our churches, we keep the bars open? And when the, when the leadership of the, of the churches and the, the leadership of the denominations want to bow down to safety and keep our churches closed in the meantime, not saying this threat isn't real, not saying the virus isn't real, but to keep our doors closed. Sounds like a plotting together. And the people of the land don't have time for church. They're mocking us. They're mocking the believers and they're mocking church. And they're mocking anybody who would stand up for Christ at this time. And they say, that that was God's plan. That God had planned beforehand that this was going to happen and he was going to step in and use that time to put a fire in his church and send them out to the highways and byways to take over the world. He says the same thing to the church in Acts 2 that he did to Adam and Eve in the garden that he does to you and I right now. Be fruitful and multiply, and go about the earth and subdue. So it may be that this is the time that God is preparing this time, that it looks like everybody's against us, that the church rises up with power and amazement, and thousands come to us that we can reclaim our homes for the gospel of Jesus Christ, reclaim our schools for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Reclaim our communities. Where we start every civil meeting with repentance and prayer. Where, where we have a line down the road, honking and flashing lights, parading so that we can get to a place where we can worship instead of to a place we can protest. Maybe it's time. Maybe this is the time. For you and I to be broken in front of our Lord, forgetting what we don't have and asking for what we need. And let them be amazed. Let him God use us to reclaim. Let his kingdom come and let his will be done. Amen. chapter 4 verse 31 let's pray that together pray it out loud pray it with me when they had prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit the Father come right now and shake this place that are the ground that we stand on shake this holy ground that we have built this temple for you on that is, is restricted from us Lord shake this ground let our cars vibrate let our hearts move through the power of your Holy Spirit. Pour your Holy Spirit out on us, not just on our heads, but so that it fills this area, all of Riverton, our brothers and sisters across the street and in the homes around us, Lord. Fill this place with your Holy Spirit. Humble us as we, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us, Father. We've been so complacent, so comfortable, so self-sufficient, probably thought we didn't need you. Forgive us for being our own king, sitting on our own throne. 
we step back, we get off right now, and we give you back that throne for our lives and for this church and for this town. We pray this through the power and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is the risen King. Amen. We take out your communion liturgy. First Corinthians says, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself. Father, we come to honor you at this table that you prepared for us. To honor your son and the sacrifice he made for us. We recognize that his body was broken and his blood was shed in our place and in our stead that we might have eternal life. This is available to all who believe, to all who call on the name of the Lord. Let's declare together our, our what we believe at the top of the page. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the cross of Father, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He, just, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with all our heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will, and we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, and we have not loved our neighbor, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. he gave himself up for us. He gave thanks to you, Father Almighty. He took the bread and broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, all of you, for this is my body, which is broken for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on this gift of bread and wine. Make it be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. Let's pray the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray in the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you'll take your cups, just the, the very thin cellophane on the top comes off first. are burning for the day when we can embrace one another and see their face and know their heart. Until then, Lord, you do that through your spirit, but we are one in you. So connect us even this moment through your spirit. Make us one. And let this meal that we just shared together unite us as brothers and sisters in you and give us all that we need be your church and amaze the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, church. We close with our with my song.
as we go today, we ask for your safety, but we also ask for boldness, Father. Give us the boldness to speak your name and to bless those with the power of your love. Amen.